everything we construct must have a foundation. The things that we believe become the cornerstones of our futures. So we must choose our foundations wisely. Build your foundation for your life upon the word of God. First of all, we must seek wisdom from the Lord. Proverbs 2, 1 through 6. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver, and search for her as for hidden treasures. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Secondly, we must trust God to direct our steps and keep us healthy. Proverbs three five six through or Proverbs three five through eight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. And thirdly, honor God with your increase. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Next, we keep God's word in our heart continually. This is something that the Lord showed me a couple of years ago. He showed me these scriptures in my devotionals on the television program that I was watching. I would open up my Bible and see this. This is something that he was telling me and urging me to do. And it's because there is such a benefit to it. And we will see life when we attend to God's word. Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. My son or daughter, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. So this is God's written word, written holy word, which is alive and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. But this is also incline your ear to my sayings. What are the sayings of the Lord? It's the inward witness. He will speak to you. The Holy Spirit will speak to you and say to you the things that you need to hear. So incline your ear to his words and his sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So it's not enough just to read it and to hear it, but to keep it in our hearts. Let it stir you. Let it not only, not only put it in your mind, but let it go from your mind to your heart because it is with the heart that man believeth. It comes from the heart. And verse 22, for they, his words, are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. The original reads, they are medicine to all of your flesh. So God's word is medicine to all of your flesh when it is heard, when it is read, when it is kept in your heart and spoken out of your mouth. And verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. The next thing we must know is faith without works is dead being alone. And so the next thing that we must learn is act on God's word. We must put action 
to what we believe. Matthew 7, 24 and 25. This is Jesus. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock or on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded upon the rock. God's word is the foundation for our lives, but we must learn how to apply it, to get it in action in our lives. It's alive. And it's active and it's sharper than a two-edged sword, but not unless we act upon it. Not unless we believe God's word. It's not just going to automatically happen for you. It takes faith. So first, I encourage you to get into these words for yourself and seek the Lord. First, seek wisdom. Second, trust God to direct your steps and keep you healthy. Put your trust in Him. Third, honor God with your increase. Four, keep God's Word in your heart continually at all times. And five, act upon the Word. This is a declaration of faith. Father, because of your Word... I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. So I covenant with you now to always give voice to your word. I will never give voice to the words of the enemy. I will never give voice to the words of the enemy. I will give no place to the devil. Your word says, God, resist the devil and he will flee from me. But I give place instead to the spirit of God that lives inside of me. You have given the angels charge over me in all my ways and my way is the way of the Lord. These things will surely come to pass for your word is within me. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I'm delivered from the powers of darkness. I'm translated into the kingdom of the Son of God. The greater one dwells inside of me, so I will not fail, for your word is within me. It is working in me and for me, not against me. In the name of Jesus, your word will cause me to prevail, even though a thousand may fall by my side and ten thousand at my right, right hand it shall not come near me for you've given your angels charge concerning me they are over me they keep me in all of my ways and in my pathway is life my pathway is health. My pathway is prosperity. For Abraham's blessings are mine. I declare it in the name of Jesus. That is what your word says. Abraham's blessings are mine. Because I am joint heirs with him. With Christ Jesus. Christ redeemed me from poverty. He redeemed me from sickness. He redeemed me from spiritual death. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I give voice to your word. I am the redeemed of the Lord, and I am saying so. Say it today. Say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's all in Him. It's in the Lord Jesus that we can have these things. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. And because that's what the Word of God declares, and because that's what I'm declaring, and because that's what I'm believing, I forbid any sickness or disease to operate in my 
my body. I forbid any tumor or growth to exist in my body. It dissolves now in the name of Jesus. It dissolves in the name of Jesus. Body, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to the bodies that are under the sound of my voice. You come into line with the word of God. I am delivered from growths and tumors. They have no right to exist. That which God has not planted is rooted out in the name of Jesus. It's rooted out of you in Jesus' name. Galatians 3.13 is in my mouth. Galatians 3.13 is flowing in my bloodstream. Galatians 3.13 flows to every cell of my body. Galatians 3.13 is forming itself inside of my body. The word is becoming flesh for you sent the word and you healed me. So your word is now being formed in my body. Agree with me. It's forming in your body. It causes growth to disappear. It causes sickness to flee. It causes arthritis to dis disappear. I speak to the bones and the joints of the hearer. In the name of Jesus, I speak life to your bones. I speak life to your joints. I speak life to the marrow. And I rebuke arthritis in the name of Jesus. Get out! In the name of Jesus Christ, for they are the healed. Healed in Jesus' name. My joints and my bones, they function properly. Arthritis, you must go. Sickness, you must flee. For the Spirit of God is upon me. The Word of God is within me. I will fear no evil, for the Word of the Lord comforts me. God is my comforter. He is my comforter. He is my keeper. Say, God is my comforter. God is my keeper. God is my healer. God is my deliverer. And I believe God's word. What you need to know right now, whoever's hearing this, faith is simply judging God Faithful. He is either faithful or he's not. He is either true or he's a liar. And his word is true. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It's simply judging God faithful. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord, I am far from oppression. Thus saith the Lord, fear does not come near me. I rebuke spirits of fear in the name of Jesus. Oh, I command it to flee. My mind is stayed on you. God, I will not fear. Thus saith the Lord, no weapon that is formed against me will prosper. But whatever I do will prosper in the name of Jesus. Oh, weapons are formed every day. The enemy hates God's chosen ones, his anointed ones. He hates them. But, oh, the feeling is mutual. I hate the enemy. And I resist him. And he has to flee. And I declare that no weapon formed against me will prosper. This must be our confession. This must be our attitude. Hate him. Hate the enemy. Hate the sickness. Hate the disease. Because if it's not from God, it is not for us to cooperate with. It is not for us to pat on the back. It is not for us to allow it to stay in our bodies. But we are to resist and we are to fight the good fight of faith in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And my righteousness is of God. It's because we are the righteousness of God in Christ that we can stand before the Lord and declare these things in the name of Jesus. It is God's righteousness that has been given to us. His identity has been gifted to us. And that's why we can follow Jesus, 
Say what he says instead of what your body is telling you. Say what he says instead of what your bank account reads. Say what he says instead of what you are feeling. You might feel depressed, but declare the joy of the Lord lives in me. You might feel a pain, but you need to declare Christ bore my pains and he carried my sicknesses and diseases. Put the word of God into your minds and down into your heart and it will pump life into the rest of your body and you will see it manifest in the name of Jesus when you put action. The way we can put action to God's word is voicing it with our tongues for there is power of death and there is power of life in the tongue. It's been given to us. What are you saying? Are you speaking these things over yourself? We need to make a covenant with God. We need to make a covenant with him and say, Lord, if it's not you, I'm not saying it. If it goes against your word, I'm not saying it. If it goes against your word, I'm not doing it. I'm not giving in, but I give voice to your word. Make a covenant with him. Heavenly Father, I make a covenant with you to voice your word. The spirit of truth within me will guide me into all truths. He will teach me all things and show me what rightfully belongs to me. I proclaim the promises of God are mine now. We must proclaim the promises of God. I will walk in prosperity. I will walk in health. For the word of God is come into me. The greater one is in me. The greater one will put me over. He will put me on top. I will not fail. I will not fear. I will not tremble when tragedy seems near. For your word will destroy the enemy's work and will keep him far from my house and far from my family. Even though many may fall by my side, I will proclaim your word. Evil will not come near me. I loose the angels now. I charge the angels with your words and the ministering spirits of God to garrison about my home, my family, my finances, and guide me into the wisdom of God. This shall be by the words of my mouth, by the spirit of God, by the word of God, and by the angels of God. Lord, you keep me. In perfect peace, for my mind is stayed upon you. I'm keeping my mind stayed upon the Lord. And my meditation is you, God, night and day. Because of that, I'll not enter the fight, but I'll lift up my hands and rejoice. I will stand to the true height of your word, and I'll not let it out of my sight. And I will not enter into the fight. Uh, we fight from victory. It's not a struggle. And not if we believe in what the word says. Because Christ has accomplished it. When he cried out, finished. When he said, finished. He meant what he said. And he finished every work that there was to be done. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, you fought for me at the cross. And you won the war. And you are fighting for me now. The angels of God will work for me. And the spirit of God is within me and shall reveal the hidden things. I confess now that I have perfect knowledge of every situation. I do not lack for the wisdom of God. For I have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed within me. So I rejoice. The enemy is defeated. God is exalted. And your word is the Lord of my life. Who is the Lord of your life? Who is the Lord of your life? Is it God's word? Father, I covenant with you to be what you say I am. Even though I do not look like it. I may not act like it. I may not feel like it. But you said I was. And you are not a liar. So I must be the righteousness of God in Christ. 
I am an overcomer. I have overcome the enemy because the greater one is in me. My faith is the victory that overcomes the world and it comes by your word. So I rejoice. I won't weep in despair. I won't wring my hands and weep in prayer, but I'll come boldly to the throne of grace as the righteousness of God in Christ. With rejoicing, my petition to bear, I'll enter into the new way and speak the things that you say. And I'll walk in victory and praise your name. And from this day, I will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, I will never be the same. This should be our confession. This should be the words on our lips. That should be words of life, words to bless, words to prosper in the name of Jesus. And this isn't something that you have to rehearse, but it's something, something alive, something living that you read and you put on the inside of you and it will come out of your mouth and you won't even know it. It will come so naturally and it will flow so fluently. You will speak God's word and that will be the norm. That will be normal for you to say what God's word says instead of how you feel, instead of what the enemy whispers in your ear, you will not listen to the contradictory reports. If it is contrary to the truth, if it is contrary to what Jesus Christ has said, then we must not say it. And so I want you to get into the word of life. Go to the words of the Lord. Read the healing scriptures, the promises of God, and get them inside of you. The enemy will speak doubt to you. He will tell you God's word doesn't work. He will tell you that you don't have enough faith. But I can tell you now that faith will work in your heart with doubt in your head. Because the enemy will always try to speak. But that's when we resist him and we say, I know that I know that I know that I know that God's word is supreme. And God's word is the Lord of my life. And that is what I speak. That is the covenant I have made with God. So I encourage you today to make a covenant with the God Almighty. The God who has given you the authority. The God who has given you the right to claim what he has given you. You can take it if it's in Jesus. If you are in Christ, then every blessing and every promise of God is rightfully yours. For we are heirs to the promises of the Lord our God. And I encourage you to speak them today. Speak God's word. Voice his word. Even if you don't feel like it. You say what his word says. And I can guarantee you that those words paired with your faith. And remember, faith is judging God faithful. And that's easy to do if we will let that become a revelation in our lives that all faith is, is judging our God faithful, then we've got it. And we speak his word with boldness. And we know that we know and we are fully convinced that that is who we are. And that is what we have. And that is what we are to walk in. Because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Covenant with him today. Say, Lord... I covenant with you to give voice to your word, to trust you. I know you are faithful. I put my trust in you and I act upon it by speaking and voicing your word in my life and over my family. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.